Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this Carison class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, it is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God, light up my darkness. O Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Lesson 14 The Liturgical Year in Christian Life The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are appointed festivals of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight, there shall be a Passover offering to the Lord. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is a festival of unleavened bread. Similarly, the Lord commanded Moses to celebrate the festival of the first fruits, festivals of weeks, the New Year Day, and the festival of the tabernacle. This is recorded in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 1 to 44. Why did God command Israelites to observe these festivals? The aim of all these festivals was to recall all the majestic things in the history of Israel performed by our Lord and pay thanks to Him. God wished that their lives should have an inseparable link with Him. What is a liturgical year? Recalling all the significant events in the salvific scheme of God consummated in Jesus, the Church offers thanks to God through the liturgical year. How the liturgical year is designed? The liturgical year is designed in such a way as to concentrate on the significant mysteries of the salvation extending from the birth of Jesus up to His glorious second coming. Who arranged this liturgical year? Our liturgical calendar is arranged as we use it now by Isoya III, the then Patriarch of the East Syrian Church. The Importance of Different Seasons Christians are called for living with a missionic experience partaking in the mysteries of Jesus' life so that they may secure the consequent heavenly bliss. The time-bound commemoration and observance of all these salvific events consummated in Jesus and a life suiting to their spirit no doubt would transform us to true Christians. On the basis of the importance of the events in the history of salvation, the liturgical year is divided into nine seasons. And those nine seasons are First, Annunciation Second, Nativity Third, Epiphany Fourth, Lent Fifth, Easter Six, Apostles Seventh, Summer Eight, Elijah Cross Moses And Nine, Dedication of the Church in order to impart the spirit of each season to the faithful, the prayers of the Holy Kurbana and the Divine Office are arranged accordingly. To grow in the Messianic experience, we must live according to the spirit of the different periods of the liturgical year. That is the reason why the Church teaches us to resort to spiritual exercises either emanating from the liturgical practices or agreeable to them. Annunciation 
the liturgical year starts with annunciation this period is planned to prepare for the birth of christ falling on 25th december this period is so arranged that there are four sundays before christmas and the 25 day fasting prior to christmas is from 1st to 25th december in syria this period is known as subra meaning the period of announcements the announcement by angel gabriel to blessed virgin mary was a welcome one to the people awaiting their redeemer the unconditional love of god for us despite our sinfulness is revealed through christmas we must repay this love of god by loving god and man unconditionally the main topics we meditate upon during this period are the announcement about the birth of john the baptist the forerunner of jesus the birth of john the creation of man the disobedience of our forefathers and the consequences the deplorable state of the fallen man the promise of redemption by god the covenant of god with man and the prophecies about the redeemer the church specially reminds us of the negative aspects of sin to receive the redeemer repentance and penance are essential during this period we remember in a special way blessed virgin mary who cooperated wholeheartedly with the mystery of salvation prayers and hymns in honor of virgin mary are special features of the period nativity the duration between the day of christmas and the feast of epiphany is the period of nativity the important thoughts for meditation offered for the period are the birth of jesus his presentation in the temple the visit by the wise men and escape to egypt we must remember at this juncture the affection and love of god who sent his son to redeem mankind despite our worthlessness the inorid happiness at the birth of the redeemer praise and gratitude to god for having sent the redeemer and our respect for blessed virgin mary are the different sentiments we must give vent during the spirit epiphany or denha in this spirit we specially remember the baptism and the public life of jesus this spirit starts with the feast of epiphany celebrated on 6th january the church has celebrated the feast of epiphany since the 2nd century in syria the word denha means the sunrise or manifestation during the baptism of jesus the sonship of jesus as well as the revelation of the mystery of the holy trinity of the father the son and the holy spirit was revealed to man we remember these events at this feast jesus revealed himself during the public life that followed his baptism the spirit of this spirit exhorts us to bear witness to christ who revealed god's love wandering all over and doing good to others and to repay his love on all the fridays of the season we commemorate all those apostles and saints who revealed jesus to the world we pray to the dead on the last friday of the spirit lent the season of lent consists of 7 weeks the days to prepare for easter the central event of the liturgical year this season starts remembering jesus who frustrated the temptations of satan this season is specially allotted to meditate on the mysteries of jesus passion and death besides engaging in doing penance for our sins the 40 day fasting by jesus mentioned in the holy scripture is the basis for this season of lent the first sunday of the season is known as peturta which means in syriac look back our church observes 50 day fasting from midnight of peturta sunday until easter sunday we remember during the season even such as the sin of man and its after effects the need for repentance and change of mind the inestimable love and mercy of god to the repentant sinner and the mysteries of the passion and death of jesus this season exhorts us to resort to fasting prayer and generosity and thus restore power to outlive the ways of evil following the footsteps of jesus who outlive the temptations and offer himself to god easter easter the most important feast of this season is central event of the liturgical year this season persuades as to participate in the new life secured by jesus with his resurrection and to enjoy it this season has 7 weeks extending from the feast of easter up to the pentecost heaven was opened by the resurrection of jesus and consequently the saints entered heaven and so the feast of all saints is celebrated on the first friday after easter the second sunday after easter is known as a new sunday or the sunday of saint thomas We commemorate on this Sunday the proclamation of faith by Apostle Thomas when he saw the resurrected Jesus. The first week of this season is called the week of weeks. The resurrection of Jesus assures our resurrection. If Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain. 
First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. Do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Romans chapter 6 verses 3 to 4. The season of Easter exhorts us to cherish every moment of our life incorporating the death and resurrection of Jesus and transform ourselves into the realm of those who are dead to sin and live in Jesus. Apostles. This season starts with the feast of Pentecost. We are expected to meditate during the season on the descent of the Holy Spirit, the relation between the apostles and the church, the spirit of the ancient church, the missionary nature of the church, etc. The official inauguration of the church was on the day of Pentecost. Only after Pentecost, the apostles, inspired by the Holy Spirit, went all over the world with the message of the gospel and laid the foundation for the different communities of the church. The meaning of the word sliha in Syriac is one who is sent. We who receive baptism and chrismation are also sent just like the apostles. This season reminds us that we must be witnesses to Christ by engaging in the apostolic mission of the church. Samma or Kaita. The 7 weeks after the season of apostles is known as the season of samma. Kaita in Syriac language means the samma, the season of harvest. It is also known as the season of fruits. Here we recall how the tree of the church being rooted with the hard work of the apostles and spreading itself far and wide in the world begot many saints and martyrs and flourishes. The season starts with the feast of the 12 apostles who were the foundation for the growth of the church. All those saints who suffered martyrdom for the growth of the church are commemorated on the Fridays of the season. All the children of the church should try to attain an interest and vigor to work for the growth of the church. Elijah Cross Moses. The feast of the exaltation of the cross celebrated on 14 September is central event of the season. We meditate on the glorious second coming of Jesus with the sign of the cross and exhorted by the angels, the end of the world and the last judgment. The church now prays for the blessing to welcome Jesus joining with the saints. This season exhorts us to be vigilant against the temptations of the devil and wait for the second coming of Jesus, setting ourselves free of sins. Moses and Elijah who appeared with Jesus at his transfiguration are also commemorated during this season. The transfiguration of Jesus is actually the symbol of his second coming. Moses is a symbol of the law and Elijah of the prophets. The ancient church believed that Elijah would come before the second coming of Jesus. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. And after an argument with the son of ruination would reveal his mistake to the world. Dedication of the church. The last 4 weeks of the liturgical year constitute the season. This is a season when we recall Jesus dedicating the church, his bride to God on Doomsday. The feast of the first week of this season is known as the feast of the dedication of the church. This season helps us to meditate more on the church and to configure ourselves with the church moving heavenward. Liturgical year and the liturgy of hours. The mystery of Christ, his incarnation and passover, which we celebrate in the Eucharist, especially at the Sunday assembly, permeates and transfigures the time of each day through the celebration of the liturgy of the hours. the divine praises this celebration faithful to the apostolic exhortations to pray constantly is so planned that the whole course of day and night is made holy by the praise of god in this public prayer of the church the faithful clergy religious and lay people exercise the royal priesthood of the baptized as it is celebrated in the form approved by the church the liturgy of the hours is truly the voice of a bride conversing with her bridegroom it is a very pr- Now it's time to answer a few questions. So your first question is list out the different seasons of the liturgical year. Also mention the redemptive events signified through them. Your second question, what are the divine mysteries commemorated in the season of annunciation? Third question, what does the spirit of the season of epiphany remind us? Fourth question, with which feast does the season of summer start? Fifth question what are the mysteries recommended by the church for meditation during the season of Elijah cross Moses
let us end the class by thanking God for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen. O oh, merciful Lord, we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory. Thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by eliminating darkness and spreading light. O oh Jesus, you said, it is not the will of my heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. We thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom. Following the example of Mother Mary, who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the Lord, we too pray that we may be strengthened to do God's will in every walk of our life.